This section covers the optional multi-surface shampoo system, which can be used to clean both carpeting and hard surface floors. Before using the shampoo system on carpets, vacuum the carpet thoroughly. To convert the unit to a shampoo system for carpets, turn off and unplug the unit. Release the outer permanent bag and remove the mini mTOR. Make sure the unit is raised all the way up. Remove the nozzle. Make sure the bristled brush for carpets is inserted in the shampoo system. If you need to insert the carpet brush, turn the belt lifter of the shampoo system to the right until the green arrows line up. The nozzle should not yet be attached to the system. Turn the shampoo system over and pull up on the hard floor rotary mop to remove it. Slide the belt over the center of the carpet brush roll and insert it into the shampoo system. While pushing up on the belt with your finger, use the handle on the belt lifter to turn it left until the red arrows line up. The belt lifter will catch and stretch the belt. Check to make sure that the baffle strip is in place on the bottom of the shampoo system to avoid potential damage to the carpet. Center the shampoo system in front of the unit. Guide the head of the nozzle onto the attaching bar. Press the nozzle up against the unit and lock in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. This will allow the brush roll to spin so the system will clean properly. Insert the waste tray. Lower the headlight hood. On the shampoo tank, Make sure the filter and the screen are in place. Next, prepare the shampoo solution. Unscrew the large cup from the top of the shampoo tank. Fill the tank with water to the first line for small rooms and the third line for large rooms. Use warm water, not hot as over foaming may occur. Then, add carpet shampoo. Add one capful for every line of water. Caution! Do not use flammable or combustible liquids in the multi-surface shampoo system. Use only genuine Kirby cleaning solutions. When finished, replace the cup. Note that using more than the appropriate number of cupfuls could cause over foaming and with less, there may not be enough foaming. One tank full of solution should clean an area about 9 feet by 12 feet. Larger carpets may require emptying the waste tray and refilling the tank. Heavily stained carpets may require more than one shampooing or may require the use of one of Kirby's stain removers. Firmly connect the elbow hose to the shampoo tray. Attach the tank by matching up the lines on the tank and the exhaust port. Rotate it toward the unit to lock firmly in place. Then connect the other end of the hose to the bottom of the shampoo tank. Plug the unit in and turn it on. If the unit does not turn on, check that the shampoo tank and the nozzle are both firmly locked in place. If not, the safety switches will not allow the unit to turn on. Lower the nozzle as far as possible. Turn the suds control valve to the carpet setting and start moving the unit. Suds flow should start immediately. Pull the unit back slowly. Suds should dispense the full width of the tray. If not, move the unit more slowly or turn off the power and check to make sure the filter screen on the tank is in place or clean the shampoo filter if necessary. Once the surface has been covered with a blanket of suds, turn the suds control valve off and go over the entire area again until all the shampoo is worked into the carpet. Scrub in multiple directions for best results. Dirty cleaning solution will collect in the waste tray. Check the indicators on the edge of the waste tray cover. When liquid begins to fill the area below the indicators, it is time to empty the waste tray. Turn off the unit, lift the waste tray, and carry it to the sink to empty. Reinsert the waste tray before continuing to shampoo. 
When finished, raise the nozzle and let it run for 15 seconds to remove the excess water from the brush roll. Turn the unit off. Unplug the unit, then remove and empty the waste tray. Remove the elbow hose from the shampoo tank. Remove the shampoo tank. Raise the headlight hood, then turn the belt lifter until the red arrows line up. Turn the lock to release the nozzle. Carefully lift the shampoo nozzle and carry it to the sink and pour out any remaining solution. To clean the tank, remove the sponge filter and the screen cap and rinse all thoroughly. Rinse the tank in cold water. Disassemble the shampoo system over the sink. First, turn the belt lifter to the right until the green arrows line up. Turn the system over and pull up on the ends of the brush roll to remove it. Rinse the shampoo system and dry all parts. Dry all parts completely before storing. Once the carpet is completely dry, reassemble the unit as an upright and thoroughly vacuum the shampooed area. This will remove the dried residue, which contains dirt and debris. In a similar fashion, the multi-surface shampoo system can be used to clean hard surface floors. Before using the shampoo system on hard floors, vacuum or sweep the floor to remove any large debris. Make sure the rotary mop for hard floors is inserted in the shampoo system. Center the shampoo system in front of the unit. Make sure the unit is raised all the way up. Guide the head of the nozzle onto the attaching bar. Press the nozzle up against the unit and lock in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. This will allow the rotary mop to spin so the system will clean properly. Lower the headlight hood and insert the waste tray. When cleaning unsealed wood or manufactured floors, only small amounts of liquid should be used for best results and to prevent damage to the floor. When cleaning these types of floors, a spray bottle of cleaning solution should be used. Attach the empty shampoo tank to the exhaust port. It is not necessary to attach the elbow hose. Spray a fine mist of cleaning solution on a small area of the floor. Do not over wet the floor. Only a small amount of solution is needed. Make sure Tech Drive Power Assist is in neutral by pressing the left button down. Press the toe touch control upper pedal repeatedly until the rotary mop contacts the floor. Turn the unit on and move it back and forth to clean the floor. Mist the floor with additional cleaner as needed. Turn the unit off and empty the waste tray when necessary. Allow the floor to dry completely. If necessary, use a towel to wipe up any excess fluid. For sealed floor surfaces such as tile or vinyl, the shampoo tank can be used to dispense cleaning solution on the floor instead of using the spray bottle. To prepare the cleaning solution, first unscrew the large cup from the top of the shampoo tank. Fill the tank with water to the first line for small rooms and the third line for large rooms. Then add one capful of cleaning solution using the cap from the shampoo tank to measure the solution. When finished, replace the cup. One tank full of solution should clean an area about 10 feet by 12 feet. Larger areas may require refilling the tank. Attach the tank by matching up the lines on the tank and the exhaust port. Rotate it toward the unit to lock firmly in place. Firmly connect the elbow hose to the shampoo tray then connect the other end to the bottom of the shampoo tank. Lower the nozzle as far as possible. Turn the suds control valve to the hard floor setting and start moving the unit. Do not turn the valve to the carpet setting as it will apply too much solution to the floor. 
Move the unit back and forth slowly to clean the floor. Turn the valve on the shampoo tank to off and go over the floor again to pick up remaining solution. Dirty cleaning solution will collect in the waste tray. Check the indicators on the edge of the waste tray cover. When liquid begins to fill the area below the indicators, it is time to empty the waste tray. Rinse and reinsert the waste tray before you continue cleaning. To clean along edges, make sure the tank is on the opposite side of the edge being cleaned. When finished, raise the nozzle, then turn the unit on and let it run for 15 seconds to remove the excess water from the rotary mop. Turn the unit off. Unplug the unit. Remove the shampoo system to rinse and rinse all parts thoroughly. Allow all parts to thoroughly dry before storing. Over time, fibers on the mop will also wear down. When this happens, the mop will not recover as much liquid from the floor and should be replaced. Replacement mops are available from your local Kirby distributor.